<laughs> Sorry, it took so long. Grad school was like actually really hard and I just finished my first year. So I'm hopefully back to making videos or I'm gonna try because I think I tackled the most difficult parts of my degree within the first two semesters. So hopefully the next two will be not that bad. So today I'm finally going to talk about my program and the interview questions because I had several people reach out to me in the comments and also on my Instagram account about like doing grad school interviews and they were actually interviewing for my program too so I am here to help but I don't want to say the name of my school online just for like privacy and because I still go to school there but I will talk about my master's program so I am in the GSIS program in Korea which means graduate school for international studies. Several schools in Korea and specifically in Seoul offer this master's program. I think all of them are taught in English. At these schools, they usually have four different majors. So for example, at my school, we have international trade, international finance, international relations, and Korean East Asian studies. And at the other programs, the majors are kind of similar, but they vary a little bit differently. So like, for example, instead of trade, they might do commerce or international business, something like that. But at my school, I study international trade. And a little scholarship update is that I'm about to start my third semester and I'm waiting for the scholarship announcement. But for my first and second semester, I was able to maintain 75% scholarship. And Actually, this past semester, my GPA was even higher. So I'm quite confident, knock on wood, that I am going to keep this 75% scholarship at least. But at my school, if you have really good grades, you can also get 100% as well. So my interview was in person, and this is at the school that I'm going to now. I did have some online interviews for other schools, but I chose this one because I liked it the best and I think I performed really well in the interview. On the interview day, maybe people might be curious what I was wearing, but I was wearing black skinny jeans, a white blouse, and a pink blazer on top with some dress shoes. So how the interview worked is that I was not the only person there that day. There were about 30 or 40 other people interviewing and we all sat in a waiting room together, which is one of the classrooms. and. It's COVID, so we're not really allowed to talk. It's very quiet. We can't sit next to each other. And I actually had to wait a couple hours before my interview. But I am very thankful for those few hours because I came in with a copy of The Economist because I didn't want to be sitting there playing on my phone. I didn't want to, want to make a bad impression to the people who were supervising me because I don't know who they are. Now I know they were our administrators from the administration office but I wanted to make a good impression to everyone. So I brought a copy of The Economist. And in preparation for graduate school, I had been reading The Economist for about a year because my undergraduate studies are not related to international trade. So I wanted to be, you know, as educated as I can be to do a master's program. And so during my waiting time, I was actually reading The Economist. And I feel like this helped me so much during my interview because when they called me, for my turn to go to the interview, they actually took me to a hallway and had me sit in a chair. And they're like, okay, you're going to go. There was another person there and there was a person in the room. And they're just like, you're going to go third, but here. And they gave me these pieces of paper and they're like, you're gonna draw this random question related to trade. And then you're gonna answer it in your interview. And I was so scared because I had like practiced any question they could have possibly asked me off my cover letter or my CV, like anything. But I never studied trade before. So I was losing my freaking mind and I pulled the slip of paper. And I remember at that time, I was not 100% sure what the term was. So my question was, what is reshoring and why are governments these days pursuing reshoring policies? And I did not know 100% what reshoring was, but I did read in The Economist, especially 
in the article right before my interview about how COVID has had a huge impact on international trade. And so from that, I used what I like keywords, context clues of what I think reshoring is and what it could be because of the impact on trade from COVID. So I knew that it was a COVID related issue. So let's go to the interview now and I'll tell you the answer to that question later. So walking into interview, it was when it was my turn, there were only two people interviewing me. And at the time I didn't know who they were, but one of them was my Dean. And another one was a professor from the finance department. I was already really scared. And of course the first question was introduce yourself. And my little tip for introduce yourself is like, it should be about one minute long between one and two minutes, but I think mine was about one minute long. And you want to tell them about yourself, but you don't want to summarize what you wrote in your cover letter or what's written on your CV because they already read that and they already know that information. And I know that because they had all those documents on the desk with them. So I had prepared a monologue for them and it was actually really well written. It was more like a story, like something happened for me to change my desire to study just new studies and actually I talked about all the experiences I had because in my cover letter I didn't really talk about my experiences after graduation and for all you guys here because no one knows this you might have seen that I posted videos from Switzerland with Mr. Moon but actually after I graduated I did not want to go into my field anymore it was like healthcare so I like just like left America suddenly and randomly and I moved to France with Mr. Moon and Mr. Moon was working at a international project and I learned all about that and then we moved to Switzerland because Mr. Moon was working for a very 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 good and famous international organization and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that he worked there because he still does work there but so I had these experiences and I was meeting people from like really prestigious projects. And that's what kind of made me change my mind more towards international studies. So actually that's what I talked about in my monologue. So that kind of like got their attention. And during my monologue, I went ahead and just told them what I wanted to write my thesis about because my previous study was like related to healthcare but now it's going international trade. So I wanted to connect my previous studies with my master's to show that, you know, I have future plans and I'm a desirable candidate. So I talked about my thesis topic. Well, my hypothetical thesis topic. So I went ahead and introduced it and I, you know, told them what it was. I don't want to tell you guys because I might be writing it on that, but it was, you know, connecting healthcare and trade together. And, you know, they looked at me and they said, Oh, you know, that's an interesting topic. And huh, it might be difficult. It might be challenging. And I said, you know what, that's okay, because I like a challenge. I am ready for a challenge. And then my professors that were interviewing me, they had studied in America, they had gotten PhDs there and master's degree. So they're like, oh, you are from healthcare. And they wanted to talk to me about American healthcare because they are so shocked at the system and how it's like so freaking expensive. And like part of my desire is to aid in healthcare reformation. And that's what I was talking about in my monologue. So we actually had a conversation about that. And I think my interview is a little bit unique because you know, I'm American, they studied in America, so we have some kind of connection. And my Dean, he's trying to be really serious the whole time. But this finance professor, he's like, Hey, you know, my brother is a professor in the United States. I was like, Oh, where where does your, your brother work? And he said, Oh, he works at this university, in this state, which was my university. And I was like, you know, I got, we started vibing because this guy was really excited because I'm from the countryside. So they're quite surprised to see someone like me in Korea. So he was really excited. 
and then I got really excited. So me and the finance professor were just like vibing the whole time. And he was super duper excited. So he was really jolly asking me more like personal questions, not like career questions. And I think that helped me feel a lot more comfortable during the interview. And I think it helped me stand out in both professors perspective because they could tell I was friendly and relatable. For the second question about reshoring. So they're like, okay, I want you to read the question off your slip of paper and answer it for me. And so I read it. What is reshoring and why are so many governments these days pursuing reshoring policies? And you know, but I think you should never lie in an interview or act like you know something when you don't. So I told them directly, to be honest, I don't know what reshoring means. But when I think about it, I think it means blah, 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 blah. And actually I wasn't a hundred percent right, but I was able to, with the information about trade being like severely impacted by pandemic and also I was able to use examples specific to America because I had read that article and so I was talking about it and you know ultimately reshoring is like bringing companies back to your home country and producing items so I didn't answer it like 100% well but I was able to answer it good enough and I think that that was good that I didn't lie or try to talk like some BS about something that I didn't know is it shows that I'm honest. And I think that really helped a lot. The next question was, why did you choose international trade? And so I explained to them that I really like international trade. It's very interdisciplinary. And I explained like in my future, I can use this to work in an organization and I can go even higher up to being really high in an organization like the UN. But I liked that this major was so interdisciplinary that I could learn like marketing and business too that I could apply to any like career I was interested in. So I really talked about why I was interested in international trade. And then I talked about why I wanted to do it at my school. Not only did I say why I want to study international trade, I specifically said why I want to study at this school. And I had done research on the website and I said, you know, this school is well known for having small classes where you can form relationships with your professors. And that's what I want. I like this characteristic about this school because I want to be close to my professors. So when answering why you chose your major, you could choose it at any other university. You should really look for characteristics about that specific university because then the professors know that you are interested in, in this specific school, that you're not just applying to random schools just to get a degree and you know it's good it looks great and then my next question was the most terrifying question anyone can ask you in an interview so the dean asked me hey I want you to evaluate yourself as a student from your undergraduate studies and I was like oh um what exactly do you mean by evaluate myself and let me tell y'all something. This man pulled out my transcript and all my grades. And there was one semester in my undergraduate that I did horrible. Like I had to work so hard to bring those grades up. He asked me, yeah, I see you made a couple bad grades in this semester. Why is that? And oh my God, my heart like sank and dropped. It was so scary, but I thought fast and I explained to him oh, actually that was when I was studying science. And around that time, that's when I realized that I didn't have any passion for healthcare anymore. And I explained actually the semester after that, I came to Korea for the first time as an exchange student. And when I come back, you can see that my grades in Korea were really high. And also all my grades after that were very, very high. And that's because I was introduced into this international environment where I was meeting students from other countries and from the countryside we don't really have this experience and I was so inspired because I wanted to do something else so I was working really hard to get better grades and do a good job so I think that was like a really good answer because he asked me like what happened did your boyfriend break up with you or something like really like 
you know, a question to get you to really choke up and see how you deal with like stress or an unexpected question. But I answered it really well and they really liked that answer. And so then my, my buddy, the finance guy was like, oh my God, like, why did you choose Korea? Like, why Korea? And so I was talking to him about, oh, well, actually, I really like Korean food. So if I come to Korea, then I can eat kimchi jjigae every day. And they thought that was quite funny. And then I told them, but no, in all seriousness, I really like Korea first because it was so safe and convenient. But also when I was here, I had to use the health care, the universal health care system. And I really liked it. And I wanted to learn more about it because I'm interested in hopefully moving my country in that direction too. So I wanted to come back here and live in this country and write my thesis, maybe using the Korean healthcare system. So they really liked the answer too. We, they were all really nice. And then my next question was, did you apply to any other schools? And so I did not tell them where I applied. I didn't tell them that I had already been accepted into another school. I said, yes, I did apply to other schools but I want to go to school at this one. And let me tell you why. And I listed several reasons why I wanted to go to school here. First, because of the small classes, but also they offer, my school offers a discount for the language school for people in my major. And it's a really good language school. So I said, I want to study Korean as a third language at this school and I can use this scholarship. So I gave multiple reasons. And that also shows that I did research about the university. And then I had my final question. And my final question was, do you have any questions for us? And by now I know that you should always ask a question. So I did, I asked them, cause at that time we had COVID, but COVID was, <laughs> it was getting better. It was like after the Daegu outbreak, not, yeah. It was after the Daegu outbreak started to clear up. Everything seemed better. It was before the Shinjongi protest. It was great. And so I asked, oh, during the COVID situation, what, how will the classes for next semester be conducted? Because up until now, they had been only online. And so, you know, they're like, oh, that's okay. So they're explaining to me, oh, we're going to try to have classes offline. But if COVID is bad, then we're going to go online. So I'll explain that. And then that was the end of my interview. And I said goodbye and I left. And I think in total, the interview was only about 10 or 15 minutes long, but I felt really good about all my answers. I was really scared about the evaluate myself as a student, but I got in with 75% scholarship. So I did a good job. <laughs> so this is why I said in my previous video that I think interviewing skills are really important because to be honest, my grades were not that good. That's apparent because they asked me why they weren't that good. I have only worked as a teacher. I never had a job before other than like waiting tables in a restaurant. I just didn't have that much experience. And so I really attribute my high scholarship to my interview skills. So I hope this is helpful to those who are interviewing or preparing to interview or choosing a master's program in Korea. I'm going to make a follow-up video and also I'm going to talk about jobs as a graduate student in Korea because I have like three or four different jobs that are illegal and I get paid really well and thanks for watching. If you have any questions about my interview, just leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer. And if you are getting ready to apply for grad school in Korea, I wish you all the best. Good luck.